Hey y'all, for today's video, I thought I'd do something a little bit different um, and narrate over the top of the skating, kind of talk through the process of what I'm thinking about when I'm doing these moves or you know how the setup was feeling, stuff like that. Um, and yeah, basically had these two really long tripod shots with a couple of B-roll clips in between and thought, you know, the, the, the birds in the background and the raw audio was just too nice to chop up into each trick so let's just let it play it's it's a bit of a longer video but you know um sometimes that's just kind of nice to watch someone skate and hear what their thoughts are so kind of the first thing i was doing at this sort of pavilion spot um was just getting used to this new setup uh I haven't skated the endless ufs 80 in a little while and uh, last time I did, I had kind of some used wheels on it, um, but I'm using the Hydrogen Spectre 4 by 80 millimeter wheels in this video, and I was just kind of getting them, getting them broken in and seeing how they feel. And uh, yeah, I kind of started with these almost hockey-inspired figure eight movements. I was just kind of feeling the rocker, how it curved and how it on the ground and I uh, wasn't really ready to do swivels yet but yeah I just wanted to kind of get the feel of the skate and experience like a small space here um, yeah cleared off this this area had a bunch of branches and twigs and stuff and there's still cracks in the ground but I find it really enjoyable to have kind of a constrained area it forces you to think about the shape of the space and kind of work with it um, but yeah Kind of moving from right to left in the space due to the backdrop i wanted to kind of film the city in the background I thought that looked cool so most of these tricks are coming in turning left um sometimes the music isn't hitting so that, you know you gotta double tap the earbud and get the right song on uh, but yeah a lot of kind of open book starts uh throughout here and kind of getting a feel of how how the wheels break loose and how they catch you can kind of see like in a lion like that you can really pump out of it with a consistent rocker these, these skates have that very intuitive rocker so uh yeah so anyway um been working a lot of interesting toe forward toe pivot moves and thought i would probably experiment with that a fair bit uh, throughout the session and just kind of see how gazelles feel see how lions feel that um, shorter setup like this is definitely not my go-to. I like the, the cantilevered feeling of something sticking way off of my foot. It's been really cool. Um, but I can't deny that there is a danciness that comes with something this small and underfoot. And it sort of sort of disappears underneath you. Um, ooh, I like that move pivot to revert Daffy. Yeah, so, so yeah, just been inspired by seeing a bunch of people on shorter frames recently and, and yeah, 4x90, 4x80 even, you know, seeing Danny Aldridge skating and uh, Rui Vera plus Nicola Torelli on the 3x1.5 or the 4x80 Solas. Um, yeah, I also recently was watching a Leon uh, skating a 4x100, I want to say, and doing a really cool kind of C-step, I think Brock would call it a C-step um, type of move where it's like a crisscross of the feet. But, uh, yeah, so I was focused on that during the session. You know, basically what you're watching is experimentation, just trying to run through tricks I know how to do on this new setup and see how how it feels to do weird stuff like a laid back open book <laughs> and how does that have to resolve well a, a cool gazelle swivel out is sort of the release of that potential energy um yeah so anyway the short frames one of the main thoughts here is you know how do i how do i kick my feet differently how do i get onto the toe and spin or you know kind of 
what are they what are they good for how does it feel to do moves that i've done on bigger frames on these or how does it feel to do totally new moves that i haven't really thought of because i haven't skated this size of frame very much um but yeah kind of todd inspired heel pivot there out of a daffy just thinking about the benefits of a short frame and for me one of those is being able to do heel rolls easier heel presses heel presses maybe not but heel rolls for sure um due to the geometry of the rear wheel being more underfoot than on a longer frame um, longer frame is definitely more challenging for me for heel presses and uh yeah i think at a certain point here i started trying to do a toe spin and focused on bringing the arms from outside or for, from sticking way out to close to the chest. Oop, got a little turnt there. But yeah, trying to see if I can crank my rotational energy into a single vertical plane of spinning. A couple clumsy ones in here, but I think we got a good one in here at some point. Yeah, toe spins are interesting too. The the point that you're spinning on feels like it can be more static or is allowed to be more static whereas on a longer frame it traces a larger circle typically when they do a spin instead of being a stationary pivot It's a little interesting that I prefer to spin on my left foot so that my right foot can be the swing leg, but almost all my one-footed wizard moves I do on my right foot. So definitely an interesting kind of comfort zone thing. What people what tricks people do with one foot versus the other. Uh, and here's where I started practicing that that jumping crossover trick that Leon does. Definitely worked on this one for a while. I thought that it wouldn't be that hard. Um, and the general movement is doable, but to have the fluidity was something I was looking for. It was not landing hard, but just having my feet move in a fluid fashion underneath me. And I really struggled to even do it at all sometimes, but to uh, to not feel like I was plonking my feet down hard on the ground. But yeah, I, I think over the span of trying this trick, you know, I was originally trying to focus on doing it in a straight line, because that's kind of the way that it was presented on Instagram. But then I started to feel like the C-step movement when you kick out the feet and do the under push that I could really lean back on that and kind of curve the whole overall movement. Um, eventually, the hardest part for me was kicking the my left foot behind my right foot on the, on the second half. Of the move. It just felt clumsy most of the times, that last little bit. But I started to kind of get the feel of it. It never really clicked the way that I wanted to. Maybe I need more rocker to kind of feel the curvature of the of the frame and everything but overall you know, I eventually got a few that I was happy with and as is the case with wizard skating type stuff I wasn't falling you know I was, I was landing the trick basically every time you know 10 15 tries however many tries you know and it's really not about landing the trick like it's possible to land a trick you know you can lift your skate or whatever but if you want the illusion to be proper or if you're if you want the um kind of overall effect to be of a wow factor i think personally i have a standard for fluidity and and, and flow and things like this like i definitely don't want my arms flailing around too much i definitely want my my feet you know 
tracing predictable carves on the ground and um, if it's a jumping move like this I want it to the jumps to match the tempo of the rest of the movement like that was a good flow but I didn't quite have the uh, you know the pop out so yeah I think that that groove is one word that Pietro used just to kind of you know are you are you on the rhythm and the tempo of the movement or are you changing it up a little too much and making kind of cacophonous sort of discordant skating sounds and movements. That's yeah, it's definitely an interesting pursuit. They talk about having standards for certain tricks and aggressive skating with, you know, top sides and all this sort of stuff. But, you know, I, I hope that wizard skating doesn't fall into that and that it's a lot more subjective for what we consider to be you know, proper or like high level skating. Um, and I definitely want to hold myself to, you know, a certain standard, unless it's a totally new idea that's just super rough. Like I really do try to articulate exactly what I want to convey, if that makes sense. Like I want to make sure that the viewer feels the feeling that I felt <laughs> when I did the thing. And if that feeling is kind of sucky then yeah not as fun but if it flows it resonates so once i figured out leon's move it was time to just like shake it out a little bit and think about <laughs> using these these short ass frames uh the thing i was trying the other night was doing like an open heel and then a closed toe thing and i don't know not the worst it also feels like you're gonna snap your arms and else acls some part of your body is gonna not have a good time. Um, yeah, let's see here. So the there's a move that Nicola did where he ran and extended a heel roll on each foot as he as he landed, and that has stuck with me for a long time. Like I do it a lot, and on these short frames, it's it's really something else. It feels super fun. Definitely more natural than on a long frame. But yeah. I think I could feel that I was kind of cooling down here and probably going to move on to a new spot soon, but the light was just incredible, kind of poking through the clouds, and it was just, it was really cool to see the, the city start to kind of light up. Uh, but yeah, the last, uh, last trick I was working on here was utilizing the space in the other direction and trying to use, you can kind of see that the, the whole pad of concrete is sort of circular curve so I was trying to do these close lion like snappy snappy lion chains and trying to avoid the crack just trying to do a swivel on the pads of concrete and get you know and not on the cracks where I would get stuck um, and one of the things I was playing with here was initiating the forward outside edge early instead of pushing off straight into the lion just holding the uh the entry carve and using counter twist and rotation to just create a lion there's definitely a little bit different feeling and something nice about having just the four wheels and such a short base it just it just feels predictable so yeah uh finished exploring that spot so it's getting over to um, the fresh pavement over by Meow Wolf and the Bronco Stadium, and I you know, saw this weird plane doing weird things. Um, the um, predictability of the rocker and just the feeling of those four wheels and not like some complicated five or six wheel thing. I knew I just wanted smooth pavement that I could trust and just feel this like perfect edge grip. So, went back to this new spot old spot new pavement i guess and just uh skated around set up the tripod and i think we got another maybe eight or nine ten minutes i don't know skating to, to look forward to here but this is a downward slope uh, a little bit downward slope and um you know i i just love that it faces this awesome city view the asphalt is brand new and uh set my camera up thinking um you know, it's, a, it's got a fair amount of zoom on it, but I wanted to have a pretty wide field, so I set my camera up pretty far away. 
and punched into this area and then my goal was to escape between the camera and that fire hydrant out there and try to stay in frame. I did a pretty good job for most of this but uh, if you see me slide out to the side definitely you know not on purpose. Um, but yeah in this huge open space I mean honestly it is just inspiring how big it is. This is the Broncos or the whatever in Powerfield parking lot and it just makes you want to go fast. Especially with this like small lightweight frame. I just feeling the double push, just cruising and feeling like I was never gonna catch my you know, clip my toes or anything. I could just have total freedom of movement here and yeah, yeah, it's kind of an inspiring spot. I think I'm mostly just focused on high speed, you know, subtle subtle wizard moves and swivels and stuff like that. It also was kind of nice watching this back that um, there's actually a decent amount of like, bird sounds and everything. I'm in the middle of this parking lot, this huge field of asphalt and concrete, right? And uh, somehow there was those geese and you know, songbirds and stuff. I think maybe they hang out you know, under the bridge or something like that. But yeah, just pretty awesome to get out here and find Zen and almost eat it super hard right there, but still cruising. It's surprising. I talk a lot about how much grip you get with a five wheel frame or a six wheel frame, but uh, the predictability of that grip is also like a really important thing. Small, small wheels and, you know, just a well tuned rocker goes a long way. You still have a lot of grip. You just you know, bring this car forward and backward. Otherwise that grip would break through. Yeah, so I think I was kind of trying to do some of that similar work on in the last clip of, of uh, holding an outside edge and just trying to find the rotation of the lion from nothing. I think I've gotten pretty good at doing wizard moves where I push off into them, but doing wizard moves where oh, what a satisfying result. Doing wizard moves where you, you're just rolling along and you create the wizard move from scratch is all the best feeling. Super hard though. Yeah, ultimately this frame to me represents like a dance frame. And it's not the most rocker. And once the wheels wear a little bit, I can rocker the wheels and the ends up, I think. And that'll be kind of cool. Make like a true slalom frame for a Seba UFS boot. But yeah, till then, I don't know. This default rocker is just intuitive. Um, something else I could talk about too is uh, I don't know, clothing when you skate is a funny topic, I guess. And, uh, yeah, just in this video, I'm wearing the Rockin' Frames, uh, pants. <laughs> they have zip-offs, they have reinforced knees and butt and zipper pockets and all kinds of cool features. They are definitely a little sweaty. Uh, part of the the cordura being parts of this of the pants is you know makes them warm for sure. Um, but yeah, it's it's very important I think to have like freedom of movement. Like I love the dusty jeans and their durability, but I wish they almost had like a wider leg for a little more. I don't know, just less restricted movement. Um, I don't know if you can catch this in some of these clips here, but the uh, the zip-off pants in this video, I have the, the backs of them open for ventilation, just to try to get some airflow. Um, this was definitely one of those power hour type of type of sessions where I actually recorded almost half of the of the time. Um, but yeah, if you can from tell from this series of S moves, I was trying to um, essentially when you do one S move, you can kind of push off into it and you can kind of just survive through it to the end. But to do multiple S moves in a row, 
uh, definitely more challenging. So initiating with the forward leg kick and then knowing that I have to do that forward leg kick again for the second S, you can see I kind of realized I got to get that forward leg swing out there as soon as possible for the second S move. It's kind of interesting learning, I suppose, on that trick. Um, I think it's helpful with combo moves to do them, you know, in theory, link a combo to a combo and do that same combo over and over again. Um, I thought I could try doing a chain of S moves on my left foot as well, but I kind of gave up on that idea pretty quick. And that leg was not really ready for the task. So back to dancing it is. Um, once again, I think that that move from Nicola, the, the heel pop running man, let's call it, uh, weighs heavily in my head. And I was trying to think about how I could do like a moonwalk type deal, but create a little bit more illusion by using the heel toe pop of the, of the short frame. So I think that's what I eventually keyed in on. I was doing some, you know, part of my little three-step process is like doing some improv and then detecting something interesting and trying to isolate it. So, yeah. So, yeah, through all this little dancing and stuff like that, I was trying to uh, figure out kind of what, what, I, what should I focus on? What move comes through when I just don't try to do any specific thing, right? Just doing a little, little footwork, seeing what happens. One of the nice things about this spot is that there's really no one around either. So it's huge and wide open. It has this amazing view of Denver downtown. But also, since I'm recording on my camcorder, I can have headphones in this whole time, phone in my pocket, not recording on the phone. And I just get funky. I kind of tune out the world. And even though to the right of me, to the right of this video, is a Colfax viaduct, um, you know, people might walk by on it and stuff like that, but like, I don't, really, I don't really care. Just tune them out and, you know, here you can see I kind of found this heel pop moonwalk thing and just tried to hone in on it. So, yeah, I think that's mostly the narration. I recorded a little bit at the end too, just my reflection on the session and I'll let my past self talk about what I was doing at the time directly after instead of days later. Hey y'all, Billy. Just got finished with a session on the Endless UFS 80s with brand new wheels for the first time. Previously I've used them with uh, worn wheels and I had a bit of a rocker set up, but this is my first time using the intended rocker. Uh, this is 4x80 all in the down position. And at first I was a little, you know, hesitant that it was flat, but like, I know the Endless rocker and I know it breaks in almost instantly. As soon as the wheels started to feel a little bit, you know, broken in, it was perfectly intuitive. And, uh, yeah, so fucking fast. So, yeah, I was just ripping around parking lots, doing a little dancing stuff because it's so short. And, um, they bring these to Germany as an alternate, uh, setup for skate parks and stuff. So, super stoked to get out there and, uh, tear it up. I'll have a set of endless frames, a set of Roka frames. It's gonna be sick. But yeah, I love these things. So much fun. Until next time, see ya.